Hello everyone. Let us experience what is tinnitus. We will play a small clip and you will come to realization what a patient with tinnitus goes through 24 hours, 7 days a week. My name is Dr. Kulmeet Kunlas and I'm a primary care physician. In this informative video, we will be discussing the science and processes which are involved in creating this fascinating process in the brain, which is at the same time so frustrating for the patients, physicians, and researchers. Before we talk about what is tinnitus, we must understand how our hearing works. Normal hearing apparatus include, from your environment, the sound is collected by your both external ears. From there, it is passed down through external auditory canal into your tympanic membrane. And tympanic membrane is set into vibration. On the other side of tympanic membrane, there are three bones which augment the sound which is being transmitted to the inner ear, which is called cochlea, it is specialized cells which recognize those vibrations. And this cochlea is filled with fluid, which is called endolymph. So when those bones strike cochlea, they set endolymph into motion and they excite inner ears and the cells lining the inner ear, which I'll call hair cells. These hair cells send signal through auditory nerve to the brain where the sound is interpreted. That is the normal process, starting from your environment, your external ear, auditory canal, tympanic membrane, in the middle ear, three bones augmenting your sound, and then impulses are being converted from mechanical to electrical via specialized hair cells and then through auditory nerve and auditory cortex in the brain where your sound is interpreted. In tinnitus, there is no external source of sound. It's a phantom sound where your brain is interpreting constant buzzing, hissing. Name any kind of characteristic sound which is being generated by your brain. So what goes wrong? What is the science behind this tinnitus? In all the research, there are four places of interest which have been recognized. Number one, your specialized hair cells. These hair cells, for some reason, become aberrant and start sending impulses through artery canal to the artery cortex when there is no external sound which is producing these impulses. Second is your brain. Your brain is a very plastic organ. If some function of the brain decreases, other areas will take over or the function which this area was designed to take care gets heightened or augmented. Whenever you have a hearing loss, certain frequencies lose the characterization or discrimination for those frequencies. It is postulated that your artery cortex fills in those blanks with this phantom buzzing, hissing, and any kind of sound. So second point of interest is your artery cortex. Third, other part of your cortex, and especially the limbic system, which is the control center for your emotions, also play a significant role because once we check the treatment, you will realize how much this emotions play a role. Then surrounding structures, your jaw, your carotid, your muscles, they all can come into picture. But 
research is indicating over and over that the place where the problem lies is either your hair cells in the cochlear apparatus in the inner ear or your auditory cortex now i could understand if you have a profession where your ears are constantly bombarded with high pitch sounds like army professionals which organized concerts or construction workers who are constantly using jackhammer or anybody who is constantly being exposed to high sounds they lead eventually to abnormality in the hair cells and they also start as a part of adaptation you start becoming differentiation or you start getting deafer to those high frequency sounds then those frequencies which we cannot hear or discriminate our auditory cortex fills in those gaps and create this buzzing hissing whistling all these sounds 24 hour basis emotion and other diseases like multiple sclerosis or any demyelinating disease can also contribute to tinnitus and then one of the tinnitus which is 100% treatable that is the cardiac source if you have carotid artery blockage you could get a permanent relief if you clean it up theme which is developing is high or loud sound exposure then hearing loss age certain medications and some genetic reason they are coming progressively more and more into research and there is a lot of attention being focused on these reasons but cardiovascular reasons if carotid or any other vascular they are the one which are treatable then if you have some jaw problem or neck issue they can lead to higher incidence and prevalence of tinnitus you know word by 7 to 10% depending on which kind of statistics you look at it you have something buzzing ringing in your sound but there is about 1 to 3% of them are being constantly frustrated and constantly hampered by this tinnitus their life is controlled both physically emotionally cognitively socially by this tinnitus just imagine 24 hour basis as i try to show you in the beginning the sound constant my heart goes to all those patients who have this disabling tinnitus now what can we do to improve it till today even based on the research and the areas of interest which we talked about there is no definitive treatment which i could prescribe to my patients except in case of if you have a jaw issues or necks or soft tissue problems or you have carotid occlusions which contributes to very minor fraction of people who have been suffering with the tinnitus most of them do not have a good treatment plan and that's what frustrates you just imagine it's so disabling and so heartbreaking what can we do for that so far in my practice i have come up with four treatment strategies number 1 treat the treatables if you have hearing loss and you go to excellent audiologist who could map all those frequencies which you are deaf to and he could program your hearing aid to those frequencies and in severe cases sometimes you may need cochlear implant if we correct those frequencies your tinnitus will improve if you have tinnitus my only one recommendation is have your primary care physician refer you to the best audiologist with the best technology second part is if you can treat something you need to change the response the way you act on it for example this constant sound creates a lot of emotional turmoil doesn't let you think interpersonal personal relationship suffers socially you become awkward and isolated but with cognitive behavior therapy meditation and yoga which teach you how to react to these frustrating stimulus 24 hour and how you could handle it when you combine controlled response to this continuous stimulus and you retrain your brain we call it tinnitus retraining treatment third 
principle which we could employ is that we provide your brain with alternative stimulus so that constant sounds which your brain is creating they are get replaced for a short period of time we are creating a counter stimulation you have a one stream of stimulation which your brain is creating you generate through whether it's a apps or some devices you are sending another sound to your brain so that you could stress this intensity of constant agonizing pain a lot of music therapy helps a lot of soothing music instruments all these different kind of things people have tried and that has helped them then next strategy you could employ is that in addition to regulating your response to this constant phantom stimulus that you create constant stimulation those are neuromodulator instruments are now available which gets implanted and your brain is constantly creating this phantom sound and these devices are also sending a counter stimulus of sound to your brain and they counteract and the intensity of both of them goes down so we talked about four principles treat the treatables modify your response to this phantom content frustrating sound third combine your response to some kind of alternative stimulus from the sound and fourth strategy was combine with some kind of a continuous stimulation where sound is generated and sent to your brain these strategies whether it's a sound therapy cognitive behavior therapy they are very very helpful then always your lifestyle is very critical in controlling your intensity and severity of your tinnitus when we talk about lifestyle we start with diet processed foods simple sugars high salt and high fat diet they all are shown to increase the intensity and severity of tinnitus number 2 exercise 30 minutes 5 days a week preferably 7 days a week is a definitely shown to alleviate tinnitus and find some solace and peace sleep you must find a regular sleep schedule and people who sleep 7 to 9 hour they are shown to improve the symptoms significantly then sleeping medications like melatonin they are also very helpful people have tried lot of supplements of zinc magnesium they all known to decrease tinnitus symptoms some herbs like ginkgo ginger they definitely decrease the intensity and severity of tinnitus i hope i have convinced you that it is a very disabling disease it takes away all peace in your mind it affects all five domains of your life whether it's a physical emotional intellectual spiritual and social domain so far lot of research is going on we have narrowed down four areas where the research is focusing hey your inner ear hair cells brain cortex other brain areas and emotional centers your local structure including jaw neck muscles and your vascular system treatment wise treat the treatable you must get hearing aid you must alter the response to this continuous frustrating stimulus combine it with alternative sounds and then consider the new devices which are constantly sending counter sounds to find peace and solace i will see you in next video we will post the playlist for tinnitus we have a lot of informational videos which have been very well prepared and very well liked thank you